and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah and he gathered up his loin and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. The Lord bless his word in Jesus name. Supernatural speed part three dash the hand of God. That was the reason for that song. <laughs> I need your hands. The hand of God. Yesterday we saw the relationship between the presence of God and supernatural speed. Today we shall see the place of the hand of God. On supernatural speed and it's going to be very sharp because I like us to pray that hand tonight three examples I'll give of the connection between the hand of God and supernatural speed example number one was our text Elijah And the chariot of Ahab. Elijah outran royal chariot, the chariot of Ahab, by the agency of the hand of the Lord. He operated in an extra human level, a supraordinary level. It's not normal for a man to run with a horse, not to talk of overtaking a horse that started the journey before you. But by the hand of the law, he was able to perform a feat that could not be accounted for by his energy. Could not be accounted for by his resources. Could not be accounted for by his abilities. That is the mystery of supernatural speed. Being able to cover ground. Being able to accomplish things in a short time. Such as your energy, your resources, and your ability cannot achieve. That was Elijah by the hand of the Lord. Our second example is Ezra and Nehemiah in the rebuilding of Jerusalem. I think there, there will be more reference or more references to the hand of the Lord, the hand of the Lord. In the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. Maybe than any other book. They had the task. Of rebuilding. The temple and the wall. Respectively. And that happened by the agency. Of the hand of the Lord. Ezra chapter 7 verse 6. Ezra. Giving a testimony. About the hand of the Lord. On his life. This Ezra went up from Babylon and he was a ready scribe in the law of Moses which the Lord God of Israel had given and the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. We'll come to that later but the hand of the Lord was upon Ezra. 
Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 8. We saw the account of the hand of the Lord upon Nehemiah. Remember I beseech thee the world. That thou commandest thy servant Moses saying if you transgress I will scatter you abroad among the nations. Go ahead. All right, move to Nehemiah chapter 2 and in verse 17. Then I said unto them, you see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste, and the gates thereof are burned with fire. Come and let us build up the wall of Jerusalem, that we be no more a reproach. Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. As also the king's words that he had spoken unto me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. What were they building? The temple by Ezra and the wall by Nehemiah. The whole, the wall around the whole of, Jer the, whole of the city of Jerusalem. Mountains that surround Jerusalem. So it's a, it's a hazardous task to build wall around the city of Jerusalem. How long did it take? Nehemiah chapter 6 verse 15. So the wall was finished in the 25th day of the month Elul in 52 days. 52 days. And it came to pass when all our enemies... Head thereof, and all the hidden that were about us saw these things, they were much cast down in their eyes, for they perceived that this work was wrought of our God. Whenever we look at the Bible, let us slow down a bit and think. What kind of house do you build in 52 days? House. A one bedroom flat? A duplex? We are in the Lord's garden. How long did it take us to build the wall of this small place where the glory dome is? A long time. A whole city surrounded with mountains had the wall completed in 52 days. To the annoyance, and you know the kind of wall they built in those days. The wall of Jericho was such a massive wall that chariot races were run on. Here we are having the wall of a whole city built under 52 days at a time of captivity. Where the majority of the people of the land had been taken captive into Babylon and Assyria. And laborers were very few. Under 52 days, the wall was finished. If it is not speed, what is that? The Bible said when there are enemies of verse 16, this cannot be man. This can, they were, when the enemies had thereof, all the hidden that were about us, when they saw these things, they were downcast. They were down, they became depressed. What kind of thing is this? Because they perceived that this couldn't have been the work of man. This work has been wrought by God. The God, the God, who finished the whole world in six days. If he finished the wall of a city in 52 days, that wasn't too much. But that is called supersonic speed. Supernatural, extraordinary speed by the hand of the Lord. I believe in the name that is above every name in the season that we are. The hand of God is going to come upon somebody. It's going to come upon the church like never before. And we are going to run with the speed that will shock the devil. And shock his agents. And shock the community of darkness. Until they will be depressed and downcast. Until they will say this can only be God. How did this happen? These people have been down for three months. Locked down globally. What is happening here? And the only conclusion will be, this can only be God.
This can only be God. This can only be God. This is the finger of God. Elijah ran faster than a chariot by the hand of the Lord. Nehemiah and Ezra, they built the wall of Jerusalem in 52 days by the hand of the Lord. The hand of the Lord is going to cause you to bring something to pass in your generation. It's going to cause us to shock the devil to rout this world in revival fire and power before Jesus Christ come hallelujah yes Lord so shall it be take your seat everywhere you are yes the hand of the Lord on Ezra and Nehemiah thirdly our third example is the hand or was the hand of the Lord the hand of the Lord. Third example, David. In the service of God for his generation. David, in the service of God for his generation. Beloved brothers and sisters, David was a man who was a candidate for the hand of the Lord. Psalm 89 verse 20 and in verse 21 psalm 89 verse 20 and in verse 21 he said i have found david my servant with my holy oil have i anointed him with whom my hand the hand of the lord shall be established with whom my hand the hand of of the Lord shall be established with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him I will stabilize my hand on David I may lay it on other people and, and bring it back later but for David I stabilize him I, sta I, I stabilize my hand on David anytime you see David day or night there is a fixed deposit on his life it is called the hand of the Lord it is called the hand of the Lord with whom my hand shall be established there is somebody here if the only thing that happens to you in this conference is to say Lord stabilize your hand on my life establish your hand on my life stabilize your hand on my life let your hand remain let it not go and come let your hand remain on my life remain on my shoulder remain on my head all I want is stabilize your hand Woo. with whom my hand shall be established take your seat you see and the question is what did the hand of the Lord what did the hand of the Lord do for David the hand answer the hand of the Lord made David to achieve in one lifetime what will take others so many lifetimes to achieve. One man. One man. By the hand of the Lord. He had one lifetime as if he had a thousand lifetimes. By the, he said with whom my hand shall be established. I stabilize my hand on his head. Was David a shepherd? Yes. Can you attempt to count the number of things that David was in his generation? Number one, shepherd. Number two, worshiper and singer. Number three, songwriter. Number four, musician. Shepherd. Worshipper, singer, songwriter. Do you know that it's not everybody who sings that writes songs, and it's not everybody who writes songs that sing. There are professional songwriters who don't sing at all, and there are singers who have never written a song in their life. David was the song worshipper, song was the shepherd, the worshipper, songwriter, and then the instrumentalist. He was a musician. He didn't only sing; he played instruments. There are instrumentalists who sing no song and there are singers who know nothing about instruments. David was there. And then he was fifthly 
a choir director. David, it was who assembled 5,000 membership choir strong to worship God by rotation for a period of 40 years. One man. Then it begins to get more dangerous. He was a fighter warrior. A lion killer. That would be number six, right? A fighter warrior. A lion killer. A giant killer. Then he was a military general. He was the commander in chief of the army of Israel. He was the man who knew how to raise soldiers. A military general. That was number what? One, two, three, and four, five, six, and seven. It was, if, if you had numbered it, I would have known where I am. Seven. And then number eight, he was a generational leader, a people developer. David was a reference king in Israel. He, every king he, who did well in Israel uh, either did as good as David or did as terrible as Jeroboam. He was a reference king until Jerusalem, the capital of Israel, became named after him, the city of David. A generational leader, a, a people developer who carried non-entities and turned them to celebrities. In 1 Samuel chapter 22 verse 1, the Bible said everyone that was in debt, everyone, yes verse 2, everyone, after he ran to the cave of Adullam, everyone in distress, everyone in debt, everyone that was discontented, they gathered themselves unto David and became, and he became captain over them. And they were with him about 400 of them. These people that were what you might call area boys. Or area men. Broken, battered, shattered, scattered, beaten, buffeted. Punctured, rumptured, not yet sutured. Those were the kind of people. And in 2 Samuel chapter 23 verse 8, the Bible now began to refer to them as the mighty men of David. Ordinary people became mighty men by the expert leadership people development skills that he carried. Give him an entity, he will process them into celebrities. That was David. That was David. He was people developer per excellence. Was that number eight or, or, or number nine? And then, that was number one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Number nine. All right, next number, <laughs> nine or ten. David was an inventor, inventor, inventor. He invented music equipment. It must refer to David. In Amos chapter six, verse five, he said that. Talk about people that chant to the sound of the vial and invent to themselves instruments of music like David. Instruments of music like David. David. Was an inventor of instruments of music the instruments that they played his people played was invented by david now it gets more scary number 12 he was a king he had the anointing of a king in first samuel chapter 16 from verse 1 all the way to verse 13 you will saw you will see how god told Saul to go to the house of Jesse and anoint the king for him. And David was anointed king. Then, 
13 or 12 or 13, he was a prophet. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your foot too. Psalm 110 verse 1. He was having a revelation. You see, the first Lord is all capital letters. The second Lord is first letter capital and the other one is small letter. He was seeing God the Father speaking to God the Son. In a prophetic vision. And in Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2, verse 29 to 30, the Bible identified David clearly as a prophet. He said, men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulcher is with us this day. Therefore, being a prophet, and knowing that God has sworn with an oath to him, that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he would raise up Christ to sit upon his throne. We can stop there. Being a prophet. In the Old Testament, you were either a king, a prophet, or a priest. If you had a calling. That is, if you had a calling. Every other person was just there. But David was king. He was prophet. And also priest. 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 David was of the tribe of Judah. The priesthood belonged to the tribe of Levi. But David occupied the position that belonged to Judah and also the position that belonged to Levites. How do I know? In 2 Samuel chapter 6, verse 17 to 19, he said, Take it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. And David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Go back, go back there. David offered burnt, he didn't call a priest to assist him or fight. He didn't call a Levite to assist him offer burnt offerings or peace offerings because the mantle of priesthood was upon him. If you remember there was a time Samuel was meant to come and offer an offering. And Saul couldn't wait for him. He offered it. It was a sin for him. Because it didn't pertain to him to offer offerings or sacrifices. It pertained to the priest. And for that act, the kingdom left him. Not David. Not David. David offered and it was alright. Because he was, a, he was in the office of priesthood. Alright. And he offered burnt offerings and peace offerings himself before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering, burnt offerings and peace offerings, he himself blessed the people. That is the duty of the priest. Numbers chapter 6 verse 23. Tell Aaron and he speak unto Aaron and to his son saying, On this wise you shall bless the children of Israel, saying unto them, The Lord bless you. What kind of man is this? Ay, 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 ay. He won good his way. He ransacked every realm. He stepped into every dimension. And in Acts chapter 13 verse 36, Paul the apostle summarized saying, for David, after he had served his own generation by the will of God, he fell asleep. He served. And what was the secret of such colossal, monumental, megalosious? What is the secret of such titanic? What is the secret of supply me? What is the secret? The secret is with whom my hand is established. Beloved brothers and sisters, if you don't want your life to waste, if you don't want to live a life of struggle, if you don't want to continue struggling in your lifetime, battling with the little things you are meant to do with your life, and in the hand of the law is the secret of speed. Some of us are doing only one of the things that we just saw about David, and we are struggling to get any result, just struggling to achieve anything out of it. His hand is coming upon somebody tonight. 
in the name that is above every name his hand is coming upon somebody tonight in the name that is above every name his hand is coming upon someone tonight you are that one you scream the loudest amen how does the hand of god produce speed how does the hand of god produce speed number one the hand of god releases the help of god have you heard when people say please give me a helping hand the hand of god releases the help of god psalm 119 verse 173 psalm 119 verse 173 let thine hand help me for i have chosen thy precepts let thy hand help me for i have chosen thy precepts isaiah chapter 41 verse 10 isaiah chapter 41 and in verse 10 the bible says fear thou not for i am with thee be not dismayed for i am thy god i will strengthen thee yeah i will help you how yeah I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I am helping you and I am helping you with my hand. The hand of God releases the help of God. And understand that the help of God is a secret of speed in life. Anywhere you see somebody running too fast in this kingdom, God is helping him. God is, God is helping him. That was what they said when they finished the building of the wall in 52 days. The enemy said, this is God. This is God. This is not them. This is God. If God is helping you, no devil can slow you down. If God is helping you, no devil can slow your life and your destiny down. The hand of God releases the help of God. Number two, the hand of God releases the power of God. Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 3 and 4. Habakkuk chapter 3 says, God came from Teman, and the Holy One from Mount Parah, Sila. His glory covered the heaven, and the earth was full of his praise. Verse 4. His brightness was as the light, and he, he had horns coming out of his hand. And that was that is the hiding of his power. The power of God is inside the hand of God. Exodus chapter 15, verse 6 said, Thy right hand, O God, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, is become glorious in power. Thy right hand, O Lord, has dashed in pieces the enemy. When God lays his hand on you, it is power that has laid on you. The hand of God releases the power of God. And what does the power of God bring? Acts chapter 10 verse 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth the Holy Ghost and with power and he went. Power and he went. Power, not he sat. Power and he went. When the power of God comes upon you, there is motion, there is action, and there is function. When the power of God comes upon you, there is motion. There is action. There is function. When the power of God comes upon you, you overcome resistance. So the hand of God releases the help of God. And the hand of God releases the power of God. Number three, the hand of God releases the favor of God. It releases the favor of God. You remember where we read in Ezra chapter 7 and in verse 6. When he said the king granted him what he requested because the hand of God was upon him. This Ezra went up from Babylon and he was already scribed in the law of Moses, which the Lord God of Israel had given. And the king granted him all his requests according to the hand of the Lord his God upon him. Favor. And if everything you are looking for enters your hand on time, you fulfill your, you fulfill your desire in a hurry. Ezra chapter 8 verse 18. The hand of God. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. By the good hand of God upon us, they brought us a man. That is favor. 
Now, the hand of God releases on you the favor of God and the favor of God connects you with opportunities and personalities needed. The hand of God brings the favor and favor brings you needed opportunities and needed personalities for your journey. The favor of God causes you to be connected with the people you need, with the opportunities you need. That is the hand of God. That is how he brings supernatural speed. How does the hand of God bring supernatural speed? By the release of the help of God. Number two, by the release of the power of God. Number three, by the release of the favor of God. Number four, the hand of God releases the resources of God. The hand of God releases the resources of God. Releases the resources of God. In Isaiah chapter 45, verse 1 to verse 3, God took Cyrus by hand. Verse 2, he took him by hand. Thus says the Lord. Okay, verse 1 again. To his anointed to Cyrus, whose right hand I have holding. To subdue nations before him, I will lose the loins of kings. I will open before him the two leaf gates. I will go before thee. And make the crooked places straight. And break in pieces the gates of brass. And cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give you. The treasures of darkness is in my hands. And the hidden re re secret of. The hidden riches of secret places. The hand of God releases for you. The resources of God. In Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 8. We also saw how the hand of God releases and a letter unto Esau the keeper of the king's forest that he may give me timber to make beams for the gates of the palace which appertain to the house and for the wall of the city and for the house that I shall enter into and the king granted me according to the good hand of my God upon my head the hand of God silver and gold are in his hands and if God lays his hands on you, wretchedness cannot lay his wretched hands on you. If God lays his hands on you, scarcity cannot lay his, his wretched hands on you. The hand of God carries the resources of God. And I am sure that you know that every vision gains motion with provision. Say that again. Every vision gains motion with provision. In fact, increase it. Every vision gains acceleration with provision. If you have a vision, you have a purpose, you have something in your heart, you have, you have an intention, something to be achieved, it gains very rapid motion with provision. When somebody says there are no houses in Abuja for me to rent, it's not the houses are not available. He's talking about the money to rent the house or to buy the house. Any house you want is in this town here. House where they pay 10 million naira a year or more, they are available. Anywhere you want. Anywhere you want. Any part of town. You can easily be connected with property agents if you are looking for a house in Asokoro. There are vacant houses now. In fact, you can buy houses Four or five story buildings, some places, one billion, two billion, one point five. It's available. So the major thing is not the house that the people have, it's the money. Um, it's not looking for the house, it's looking for money. Every intention, every vision gains motion, gains acceleration with provision. And that is very, very important. The hand of the Lord releases the resources of God. Number five, the hand of the Lord releases the goodwill and comfort of God. Goodwill. 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 That is God saying, I wish you well. That is that is God saying, it's okay, you hear? It's well with you. Don't worry. You will make it, okay? I'm behind you. Nobody can confront you. I am behind. They can't confront. 
uh, they can't confront. They can't confront. Now, and that was that was what Nehemiah told the people as his CV that made them agree to work with him. In Nehemiah chapter 2 verse 18, he said, I may not have anything, but there is something behind me. All right. Back off a bit. Back off. Back up. Okay, back. Can we start from verse? Let's see. Then I said unto them, you see the distress that we are in? How Jerusalem lieth waste? And the gates thereof are burned with fire? Come, let us build up the wall of Jerusalem. That will be no more a reproach. And in case you are in doubt, what kind of boldness or confidence is worrying you? Do you have so much money? Who do you think you are? Then I told them of the hand of my God, which was good upon me. Uh, if you are, in case you are saying, is it money you have? Do you have some connections? Is there something? Do you have a new technology of construction? My credential, the hand of God, is good on me. In addition, the king's words have been spoken to me. And they said, let us rise up and build. So they strengthened their hands for this good work. They strengthened their hands for this good work. The good will of God is stronger than the witchcraft of hell. Good will. The good will of God is stronger than the bad will of the devil and his people. When a man, a woman is backed with the good will of God, there is no satanic bad will that can stop you. That was the same thing he told David. With my hand, I have strengthened you. The enemy cannot exert upon you. I am behind you. The good will of God. That was Psalm 89, verse 21 and 22. Hallelujah. And so when God is behind you, you know, I saw something today where a zebra was arrested by a lion about to finish the lion. Sorry. A, a, a zebra was arrested by a lion. The lion was about to finish the zebra. He's uh, holding it in a very mortal hold on the neck at the jugular area as usual. Then the friend of a zebra, the friend of that zebra, friend, Saw his friend in danger. Instead of running, he went towards the lion. Gave him back kicks until the lion loses his grip. Of the zebra and he escorted his friend away. That even a lion was helpless in front of a zebra that had the backing of another zebra. <laughs> How much more that bastard roaring lion that is seeking whom to devour. When you have the backing of El Shaddai, you have the backing of Jehovah, Rapha, Rufeka, Mekadesh, there is no force, no power on hell that can arrest your destiny, arrest your life and frustrate your future. Believe that, say the loudest, say amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Take your seat. It was so inspiring. So inspiring. Give the lion back kicks. <laughs> I think that was the lion that was going with injury on his. Beloved brothers and sisters, you need that hand of God tonight and it is coming. Number six, the hand of God releases supernatural strength. When God lays his hands on you, it is strength that has come. Ezra chapter 7 and in verse 28, he said, 
and has extended mercy unto me before the king and his counselors and before all the king's mighty princes and I was strengthened as the hand of the Lord my God was upon me I was strengthened we already read Psalm 89 verse 21 my arm also shall strengthen him with whom my hand shall be established my arm also shall strengthen him and how many of us know that strength is key to speed? Oh, strength is key to speed. If we have the time, we may deal with it in this, in this program. Yes. That is why they use horses for race. Because horses have incredible strength. That is why some athletes take anabolic steroids and bodybuilding steroids and some kind of strength building steroids in order to outrun other people during Olympics. So they do a test for them. To check to be sure they are not cheating other people by some injections. When God lays, that was how that was why God laid hand on Elijah, laid strength upon him until he became stronger and faster than the horse. When the hand of the Lord is upon you, you cheaply and quickly overcome the things that want to hold you down. Finally. The hand of God releases the preservation of God. Why is this necessary? Because when you begin to speed, enemies will multiply. When your success begins to increase, when your progress becomes unusual, enemies will amplify. Those who don't know where you are coming from and who think they can predict where you are going to will become angry and envious and bitter and jealous and cantankerous and wicked. But don't mind the viper if you don't lack the fire. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? You don't mind the viper if you don't lack the fire. You don't mind the viper if you don't lack the fire. The viper only came to be fired. You ask Paul the apostle, he will tell you. The hand of God releases preservation. You need to be preserved. The blessing of God attracts hostility. Supernatural speed will attract hostility. Progress will attract enmity. Especially those in the same region like you, the same field such as you, people in the same situation like you, and they are wondering, is, what is he using? Uh, is it? And so on and so forth. Ezra chapter 6, verse 31. And Ezra said, in the first year, verse 31, Ezra 6. All right. Okay, go to Psalm. 89, verse 21, 22, and 23. He said, with whom my hand shall be established. My arm also shall strengthen him. The enemy shall not exact upon him. Nor the son of wickedness afflict him. The enemy shall not exact upon him. The son of wickedness shall not afflict him. I will beat down his enemies before his face and I will plague them that hate him. Why? As a function of the hand of the law. A product of the hand of the law. I announce, I prophesy, I decree to somebody by the hand of the Lord that is on you here tonight in the name that is above every name, every agenda of disruption, every agenda of distraction, every agenda of destruction, every agenda of death targeted at you, your family, your destiny, your future is arrested now in the name of Jesus. Take your seat. Who does the hand of God rest on? Who are the candidates for the hand of God? I'll be very, very sharp here. Because some of the points appear similar to yesterday, but they are different. Number one, people who give God maximum pleasure with their lives. You give him maximum pleasure with your life. Because David, the man after God's heart, 
I have found a man after my own heart. People who give God maximum pleasure with their lives. Acts 13, 33, you can put that down. And Acts chapter 13 and in verse 14, thereabout. I found me a man after my own heart. It's 36, 1336. And then 14, 13, 14, thereabout. People who give God maximum pleasure with their lives. Just let God be happy with you. He will pat you on the back. That's the hand of God. He will pat you on the back. Let him be happy with you. Maximum pleasure. Number two, people who pursue the cause of God with passion and fire. Elijah had the hand of God upon his life in 1 Kings 17. One, he said, before God whom I stand, no rain here. People who pursue God with passion and fire. Passion. Not lukewarm people. Not people who are neither here nor there. Not people you can't tell where they stand or what they, what they believe. Pursue the cause of God with passion and fire. That was what happened to Nehemiah. In Nehemiah chapter 1 from verse 1 to verse 4. When he heard of the situation of Jerusalem, he wept. He wept. In verse 4, he wept. And it came to pass, when I heard this was that I sat down and wept. I wept. I wept. I can't imagine that the house of my God will be in this kind of state. They pursue the heart. They pursue. They pursue the cause of God with passion and fire. They are candidates for the hand of God. Number three, people who are jealous for God and his kingdom with a holy jealousy. They are jealous for God and his kingdom with a holy jealousy. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy? You read the account of David. First Samuel chapter 17. You read all the way from verse 19. Go to verse 37. Jealous with a godly jealousy. I better die than watch this man mess with the name of God. There are people who have never been affected by what the castigations that come against God and his name and his church. Jealous for God with a godly jealousy. Number four, there are people who stand in public representation and identification with God. Public representation and identification with God. Public representation of God, public identification with God. Again, Elijah. Again, David. That was First Kings chapter 17, verse 1 again. That was First Samuel chapter 17, verse 34 to 37 again. Public identification. There are people you don't know where they belong and what they believe. They are afraid and ashamed to be called the children of God. That is those, that's why the hand of God is not plenty upon many people, even upon many pastors. For many children, they are just there, professing Christian. But they are neither here nor there. They represent nothing whatsoever. They don't represent God in anything. They, they can't identify God for no reason. Number five, the hand of God is heavier from people 
People who are not afraid to risk everything for the sake of God. Risk everything. They can take risks. They are not afraid to risk everything. David seemed to be saying, I better die than watch these people mess up with God. See the risk Elijah took in 1 Kings chapter 18, starting from verse 25. He declared a contest between him and the prophets of Baal. If the fire didn't fall, Elijah was a dead man. Did you ever think of it? Choose between two people. Because Ahab and his family were worshipping Baal. The official religion of Israel was Baal worship at the time of Elijah. Let the God who answered by fire be God. If Elijah, if the Baal prophets prayed and there was no fire, and Elijah prayed and there was no fire, and the Baal prophet said, let's try again, and they prayed and there was fire. What will happen? Elijah was a dead man. The same way Elijah killed all of them. But he risked. Like Esther, if I perish, I perish. And like we know already, those who talk like that never perish. People who can risk everything. Everything. They are not afraid to confront risks. They are not afraid to challenge danger. They are not afraid to challenge hazards. They attract the hand of God. And that hand of God gives them a speed that is beyond imagination. I heard that in the... Many people don't know the way God's servant Bishop will talk the way he talks. They don't know how, what is the reason for his talk. He may be in the south there, but his ruggedization was from the north. Started from Ilorin and then went to Kaduna in the days of heavy, heavy, heavy persecution. I heard that during one of those crises of religious crisis, he drove his car to the market, in the central market on the Amadobelo Way in Kaduna there, packed it in front of the market by the roadside and sat in front on the bonnet, crossed his leg. If they burn you, welcome. Where people were running and looking for where to hide themselves. This land does not belong to a particular group of people. One day they said a particular venue was not going to be used for Christian activity or for religious purpose. He said, go and tell who sent you that with him, dead or alive, we are going to use the place. The person said, over his dead body. He said, you don't need to die. Whether you die or you are alive, it will be used. It was used. And then you see him where he is today. A person who can risk himself for the, for the sake of the kingdom and for God. Who would dare the undareable, confront the unconfrontable. And little children who were not yet born. When he was carrying the sword against Satan, the devil. Are talking rubbish that they know nothing about. And for those who are ready to take any manner of risk. To risk for God is to rise in life. Is to speed up in life. And they have seen nothing yet. They have seen nothing yet. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name, Lord. What is the secret of the hand of God? Number six is the worship of God. David, whom God said, people, what is the secret? Who are the candidates for the hand of God? People who are addicted worshippers of God. Second Kings chapter 3 verse 15. He said, when there was a need for a prophetic word, Elisha said, but now bring me a minstrel. And it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him as the minstrel played. The hand of the Lord. Addicted worshippers. Confirmed worshippers. Somebody get ready because the hand of the Lord is coming upon you tonight. Stand upon your feet.